Hey guys, we're going to skip the coding tutorials for today and we're going to talk a little bit about getting a job as a web developer with no field experience. All right, because we all know that traditionally you need experience to get a job, but you need a job to get experience, which is a little messed up. So I'm going to give you some tips on things you can do to show an employer that uh, you do have experience in programming, just not working for someone else. All right, I'm an, actually uh, a perfect example of that, uh, that type of person because I never finished college, I never had an actual job in the industry working for someone else's company, but I have plenty of experience. I could just direct an employer to my YouTube channel and they can see exactly what I do. Now, just because I haven't had actual um, experience working for another company doesn't mean that I don't know what I'm talking about. I've seen things and had experiences in this industry that I can share, and I've also done a lot of research on the subject. All right, not to mention I've been on the hiring side of this process. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the question that you probably ask yourself that I've asked myself over and over is, and is that, are you ready? Um, so you've been programming for a while. You've watched plenty of Traversy Media tutorials and you've created some stuff, but you don't feel completely secure that you know what you need to know to, to have an actual job and have some responsibility at another company. Well, let me tell you that absolutely everyone feels that way. No matter how much you know, there's always going to be more that you don't know. New technologies are released daily and everyone has to learn them. So if you're looking for a front-end developer job and you don't know, let's say, Angular or React or some other framework, that's absolutely fine. Even if the company works with Angular, you st if you have a basic understanding of JavaScript and HTML, you'll learn it pretty quickly. All right, so I would say as long as you know HTML, CSS, and a bit of JavaScript and some of the basic programming fundamentals, then you're ready to start applying as a front-end developer. All right, so for back-end stuff, I'd suggest that you learn at least one stack. So whether it's PHP, MySQL, and the LAMP stack, or Node.js and the Mean stack, um, that's plenty to start applying. All right, so one of the most important things in this whole process is having confidence. So don't doubt, your, doubt yourself. Um, it's, this is actually something that I struggled with a lot, wondering if I should even be programming. I didn't grow up in front of a computer. I didn't start programming until I was in my mid-20s. So uh, I realized that uh, after time, I realized that you, you don't, all you need to know is the basic fundamentals of web development and you can quickly learn almost anything alright and the job that hires you is gonna know that you're at you're at an entry level and they're gonna give you some leeway for that that learning time frame alright so like I said confidence is important uh, but you should also know your skill set you should know what types of jobs to apply for alright so it's good to know what type of developer or designer you are and then you can search for the right jobs. All right, so there's basically three types of web developers. So the first is a front-end web developer, or sometimes called a, de a web designer. These are people that build UIs and front-end websites. They usually have a good eye for design and layout. Uh, they know HTML, CSS, and usually some JavaScript. So they can build websites for small businesses, individuals, anyone that wants informational brochure-type websites, uh, and most businesses do. Then you have server-side programmers, who are the people that aren't so good with design and presentation, but they're great with logical programming, uh, databases, things like that. They use languages like PHP, Python, Node.js, Rails, etc. Um, usually they pair up with a designer or a front-end developer, um, and the designer will create the, the HTML layout, and then they'll create the logic and the functionality. All right, then you have the people that can do all of the above, and that's a full stack developer. So these are the guys or girls that can do it all. They can build a nice UI, and they can also make it work on the back end. All right, this is the most valuable type of developer because they can essentially do the job of two people. All right, so these are the main three types of developers, and you should really try to put yourself in one of these groups. All right, now that doesn't mean that you're gonna stay there. If you're good with PHP and MySQL, but you can't build a UI, um, it doesn't have to stay that way. Just keep at it, learn more, uh, you know, learn more about design and layout, and you'll get there. 
All right, so before you go and apply to 600 different jobs, make sure that you put some kind of resume together. Now, you want this in multiple forms. You should have a paper or a physical version, um, but you should also have a web space where you can direct employers to see more information about you and what you've done. All right, so if you have a website where you can put this stuff, that's great. If not, go and register a domain name and get something up. It can be one landing page with um, and make it very simple. In fact, you do want it to be simple because chances are if you have 10 pages of text, they're not going to take the time to read it. They'll simply move on. All right, so uh, you want to have some specific information. You want a brief introduction of yourself, who you are, where you're from, maybe a little bit of background, but not too much. And like I said, you want to keep this simple. Um, now, if it's possible, I would strongly suggest that you make some kind of video um, and put that at the top of your resume. That way people, they're not just going to read about who you are, but they can actually see it. Okay, they can see your personality. They can see if you're going to, if you're going to mesh well with the other employees at the job. All right, so uh, it makes you a real person rather than just uh, an application. All right, so if you don't like being on video like myself, you can just do a quick PowerPoint presentation and just do some bullet points similar to what I'm doing now. All right, you also want a you want a list of all your skills, okay? Most likely all of you will have HTML and CSS. If you have experience with SAS or LESS, put those down. Any front uh, front or back end languages and frameworks, put those down. Anything that you can think uh, anything that you think you can use in a project. All right, I'd suggest using or including 5 to 10 projects if possible. Um, obviously, if you haven't done five to ten projects, you can't. But even uh, if you have your own personal website, stuff like that, you can put. And I'm going to go through through that in a second. Things you can put up uh, as experience. All right. I'd also suggest including a link to your GitHub account if you have one. Um, even if you have two or three repositories, or even if you've just pulled from other people's repositories. Um, it, it lets the employer know that you're serious about coding, uh, just having a GitHub account. All right, and this, is, this isn't as true for designers. All right, so uh, this is what I would suggest at a bare minimum. If you do have educational credentials and degrees, put those. Uh, but I think today employers are more focused on what you've done and what you've built as opposed to where you went to school. Um, like I said, I didn't even finish community college. And to tell you the truth, I learned more from online courses and YouTube than I did in school when it comes to web development and programming. All right, so just because you haven't really had any client experience uh, where someone paid you for a job doesn't mean that you don't have real experience. All right, so if you even just learned HTML and CSS, I'm sure you have stuff that you've created. So you could throw that up on a subdomain and put that on your resume. All right, even if the resume, the, the one, the re resume website that you're currently having them view, you could even use that, okay? Uh, you can create a photo gallery of your personal pictures. You could create a simple application with JavaScript, maybe a slideshow or something. Hell, you could even use one of my tutorial projects, tweak it, customize it, and put that up. All right, so another thing you could do is build a website for your family and friends. So even if they won't pay you, do it for free. If your brother owns a construction company or something like that, build a site for it. If he has one uh, that's really shitty, just redo it and put that on your resume. All right, you could also do some volunteer work for places in your community. So things like churches, mom and pop shops, homeless shelters, nonprofits. Um, not only do you get great experience, but you also get to help, help some people out. Especially places like homeless shelters, uh, they're offering their time and work for free, so they deserve it the most. Another thing you could do is contribute to open source. So most open source projects allow you to add some functionality, uh, you know, submit it for review. And if you can say that you added a piece of functionality to a popular framework or something, that's really impressive to employers. All right. So this gives you a, hu a huge amount of experience working with other individuals and teams, which is priceless. All right. So find a project that you're interested in. And if you think you have something to offer, um, even just starting out if you want to do some bug testing or improve the documentation, something like that, um, and then work your way up. All right, now if you do any of these, volunteer work or for family or friends, make sure that you get a, a good testimonial and feedback. 
especially if they don't pay you, it's a really good reward to give you that feedback uh, that you can put on your website and also if, uh, if employers can contact them for a reference. Now, when you build your website or online resume, you want to choose uh, a look and a feel that you can use across multiple platforms. All right, so choose a brand, choose a, choose a color scheme, uh, something that best represents you and what you do. So two or three colors, um, well, that will go well together. Blue is a really popular color because it's a trusting color. Um, there's actually been experiments on this kind of thing. I guess blue and green are trusting and then reds and oranges can turn people off. I guess it's like a warning color or something. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in this, this kind of stuff, branding, colors and all that, but it's just from what I've read. Um, also, you don't have to, but you might want to create a logo or have someone else create a logo for you. Uh, this isn't required, but it shows people that you care about how you're perceived and that you're professional. All right, next thing is social media. You want to create professional pages on all of the popular social media websites. Uh, you may already have accounts for personal, your, your friends and your personal life, but I suggest creating one for uh, professional reasons too. So even if you have a regular Facebook account, create a Facebook page, a branded page. Um, you can keep your current profile and just create a new page. So you can create a, a Twitter account, where you can list all of your new projects, stuff like that. Um, you want to create a LinkedIn account for networking with other developers and designers. Um, create a YouTube account and upload a couple videos. If you put a video on your resume website, put that up and maybe some basic tutorials, something like that. All right, now when you create these social media pages, you want to stay consistent with your brand. So if your website is blue and gray, Keep that scheme for your cover art on YouTube and Facebook. Okay, put your logo as well. Now you'll want to choose a username that you can use across all platforms. And if you can keep that same exact name for Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, then that's great. Um, there's a really helpful site called namecheck.com that will search across the internet for domain names as well as social media accounts to see where the, the name is taken and where it's not. All right, so this next one, networking, was actually a, a really tough one for me. I'm kind of antisocial, and I hate net networking. I hate meetups and anything like that. Uh, social anxiety is something that I've struggled with, and I think a lot of programmers have as well. Uh, back in the day, programmers just sat in a corner by themselves and created simple things. But with the advancement of technology, now we need to work in big teams and collaborate uh, have online meetings and so on. So you'll have to network a bit to become successful. All right, so the first one is, is an easy one for people like me. Networking online usually doesn't involve face-to-face -face relations. Uh, you can join a group, you know, post some, some uh, helpful posts and questions, build up a reputation, help people out. Even YouTube, I network with others on YouTube. Um, you know, you build an audience and you interact with them, uh, as well as other YouTubers. So you might just find someone that works for a company that's hiring and they can give you a good recommendation. Another thing is that you can do for networking is hackathons. So these are a really fun way to, to get to know people with the same interests as you. You can also win prizes and money and trips, which is also a plus. Um, you'll be put on... you'll probably be put on a team to code with others and you'll network uh, get some good experience excuse me uh, you can search sites like Ang angel hack hacker league hackathon.io and you can find these hackathons near you all right another one is meetups so meetups and other communities are a great great tool for uh, learning and meeting other programmers so you can find meetups at websites like meetup.com as well as uh, all the social media networks. All right, um, another thing you could do is host your own meetup. So you could pick a technology that you know about, plan it, find a location, and post it online. All right, even if you get two or three people, it's a start. And then we have conventions and conferences, which are another place you can find developers and employers. Um, conferences like Node.js Interactive, WebStock, DevNexus, uh, there's a ton of them and you can search for the ones the ones uh, near you. 
All right, so you've built up your resume. You have a website, a video, all your social media accounts. Now you've, you're fully prepared to start applying. All right, so you can go right to the companies in your area, which may be a good idea, um, but you could also search online. Now, you want to make sure you're searching for the right jobs. Uh, anything in the, in, with the word entry or junior is going to be something you want to look at. Okay, Stay away from senior and words like experienced. Uh, but don't be afraid to apply. Applying isn't going to hurt. Um, you want to put yourself out there. All right, so let's take a look at the different types of um, job websites and resources available. All right, so first we have standard job boards. We've all seen them, Career Builder, um, Indeed, Job.com, places like that. Uh, companies post positions and people apply. So these are not only directed at tech jobs or web, web dev jobs. Um, you can search for any type of jobs at these sites. All right, so employers create accounts, post positions. We apply either on site or at another site. All right, so next we have Portfolio or profile-based websites. Um, these are where you can go and sign up as a designer or developer. You can post your profile and portfolio, um, put some projects up. So these are uh, sites where people looking for work would go to find you. And uh, a lot of the times, employers of companies go to these sites. All right, so some examples would be crop.com, K-R-O-P. Uh, sortfolio.com and Envato Studio. All right, then we have startup hire sites. So these are where startup companies can go and they can post a profile for positions that they need to fill. Um, now, these usually aren't high paying jobs, but a really good thing about this is that you'll be one of the first employees and that could be extremely beneficial in the future. All right, if you are, uh, especially if the company, you know, really takes off. So some examples of these sites would be AngelList, Startuppers, and StartupHire.com. All right, lastly, we have freelancing websites. And these are a little different because you're not usually applying for a permanent position, um, but, but to do a single project. And these are sites where people and companies go to post specific projects that they want done. All right, it could be a completely custom e-commerce application from scratch for the budget of 50 grand or a $25 WordPress template hack or something like that. All right, so these sites are usually um, more in depth than simple job boards. And this is actually where I got my start from. Um, I, I used what was called odesk.com back then, which is now, um, what is it, upwork.com. All right, so when you start out, you'll be working for basically crap um, until you get some reviews and feedback, and then you know you'll start to get better jobs, better paying jobs. Um, and this is really good for experience that you can put on your resume. You can get simple little jobs you can put on your resume and show that to a company that you're you're applying to. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I know I didn't touch on everything, but hopefully there's something in there that can help you guys out a little bit. If you did like this video, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, and thanks for watching.